Welcome back everybody. We just got a box of paint by Epiphanes and by the end of the video all three cans will be applied. But first a little recap. My name is Aladino and I am refitting a Cape George Cutter 36. Last week we undertook the massive job of fiberglassing the decks and it went well. Now let's get back to the painting. Soon we can paint the interior, but first we have to make up our minds uh, and choose a color from the three samples. We're aiming for white, but with a warm undertone and we don't want it to be too creamy. <laughs> it's sometimes quite hard to tell just from a sample or from a color card how it looks on the big surface. So we were lucky enough to get three samples. So here we have the 848, the 804 and the 9010. Now 9010 is not a color by Epiphanes, but it is from the RAW chart and Epiphanes can mix any custom color. So for ease of mixing up a whole can and also to get as much done as we can with these samples, we're gonna apply one can into each uh, storage compartment under the settees and one instead will go in the bilge. But first we've got to prepare all those areas for paint. A few episodes back you saw me uh, build these necks uh, that are our inspection ports for the diesel and for the water tank. Now I have only have to cut the opening and then we have a whole lot of uh, sanding and fairing before us. substantial and this is how it's coated inside and this was an old fitting that I wanted to get rid of. The idea behind these necks is to raise the opening from the bottom, from the surface so to speak, because that's where grime and water and diesel and oil and all of that can accumulate and if there is a leak we don't want that to get into our fresh water or into the diesel. Uh, so yeah, we're consolidating everything onto a safe raised turret. We're going back to medieval techniques. To fare the bilge, I am using Total Fare by Total Boat. It's uh, really nice uh, to mix, to apply and to sand. It is pretty important to have a clean bilge for a couple of reasons. It's uh, a place of indicators um, where water accumulates, um, where the water gets pumped out in an emergency. Uh, it needs to be clean, uh, free of grime, free of dirt and debris, uh, so that your safety systems can work um, adequately. It's a clean bill of health. If you can uh, eat off of your bilge, then uh, it's a very good sign for the boat in general. And I guess painting the bilge white is just a personal preference. Uh, many, they like to hide dirt uh, and paint the bilge gray or brown. And instead I like to highlight dirt <laughs> so that I can see it and uh, exterminate it. Oh no, that's a harsh word. <laughs> Oh, always was a sad girl, I heard them say, Lord, always was a sad girl, I heard them say, Lord, always was a sad girl, I heard them say, 
Maya has made partitions for the lockers on port side. Uh, she's done starboard previously and uh, she's gonna tap them in in this episode. Once those are in, then we can apply primer and paint to that locker area as well. I also tapped in two partitions that support our backrest on starboard and that is because we have a priming marathon coming up so it's good to have as many things to prime ready as possible. What keeps me going with such tasks is knowing that we are getting very close to changing the aesthetic uh, quite drastically very soon. So the primer is applied, uh, one downside is it is very smelly as uh, most uh, chemicals. So we're gonna take some time off, uh, go to Port Townsend, visit some friends and pick up an exciting package. Just outside the entrance to the Los Angeles Harbor at San Pedro, a strange adventure is nearing a climbing. Joan is at the controls as total darkness covers the channel. Time draws near for their attempt to escape from the submarine. The boat is, people know, we call it Duracell, it is an open 60. So you might know Matt and Yanni, they also have a YouTube channel, uh, the Duracell Project. It was built by Mike Plant who raced in the first Vendee Globe in the early 90s as well as the BOC. Uh, and the boat has changed hands a couple times since then, but we ended up with it here in our, at our home in Port Townsend and we're 
changing it from a ocean racing sailboat into a cruising boat for the two of us. So um, we've totally gutted the whole thing and uh, we have a huge project on our hands. And I document the whole thing. So I'm my husband's full-time documentarian. <laughs> uh, it's a huge refit. Uh, for me, it's very exciting to have friends uh, doing very similar things, even though very different boats. And it is very exciting uh, to come visit, uh, see their enormous uh, progress, and uh, yeah, just uh, have a talk, have a chat. Matt and Yanni have also been storing something for us. So this one is probably like five feet long. So can I take one end and then start going down with it? But you're sure it'll fit in your car? Five feet, yeah. Five feet does. Maybe six feet. Okay, yeah. there's one there's one really long one. Yep. Okay. Okay. Wow. Then let's be taped together or something. Sweet. Beautiful. Wow. That's amazing. So cool. And it's all different shapes and sizes. I was so excited to see those boxes. This is this is going to be huge. A while back, we got an email from a man named Brock and uh, he was telling us that he has a lot of teak in his workshop that he rarely uses though, or barely ever. And he got that teak from his brother who had a boat yard. Uh, so that teak has been sitting in his workshop and uh, he decided to make this incredible donation. So he had it all packaged up for us and sent it here and uh, I was uh, mighty excited to see it. It really, really blew my mind. Uh, this is really huge uh, for me. Yeah, it gives me more creative freedom. Um, oh, let's redo this piece or uh, I don't have to feel so bad about having removed one. Or, uh, we, can, we, we have some teak uh, that is uh, perfect uh, just for this. It makes, it makes it a lot, lot easier. Uh, teak is really expensive and we are just so grateful uh, that that um, yeah uh, people think of us um, and think to donate something like that uh, that is uh, we really really appreciate it So I've sanded uh, these compartments and the wall yesterday, but I think now we're going to focus just on the lockers. Um, we're going to apply paint here. One paint on this side, I think here we'll do the 9010. And then here on the other side, on the port side, the same thing. The lockers are all prepared and here we shall use the other one, I think the Oyster. And the third one in the bilge. Cabin so the floor grid is actually in place now. It still needs to be fiberglassed in, but it's bonded. So this shall be the area for the third color. Um, so yeah, this one here is going to be Arctic white. I just uh, looked at photos of how the bilge looked at the beginning, and uh, yeah, it's quite a quite a difference.
All right, I have applied the first coat and it already looks great in there. It actually covers pretty well and half a can was exactly right for the three compartments uh, that we made. So tomorrow we'll do the second coat and then we'll do the reveal and we'll look at it. So I, I want to thank Epiphanes. Um, I am very happy, humbled and uh, just thankful to Epiphanes for backing us. They are one of the marine leaders in yacht paint. So this is very, very exciting. And it really pays off because this is the step that one has worked for. It is uh, hugely gratifying uh, after all the work you've put in. Or even if it's uh, just a paint job from scratch, it doesn't have to be a crazy build <laughs> like we are facing. But yeah, it, it protects, uh, it makes it really glossy and uh, it just uh, brings joy every time you look at it. So yeah, huge thank you. On starboard we have the 9010, on port we have the 804 and in the bilge we have used the 848. So I guess it's decision time. It's a little hard for the camera to pick up the differences, uh, but pretty much as I described earlier, 804 is uh, definitely the creamiest and too creamy in our, uh, for, for our taste. Uh, I mean, these things are very personal. Um, the 848 in the bilge is a little too crispy. Uh, we really like the 9010. It's a perfect white color, uh, but it doesn't hit you in the face. It's not too crisp. Um, it, it is relaxing to the eye, uh, but not, not obviously too warm. Uh, it doesn't uh, make you uh, too relaxed or sleepy. <laughs> it feels good to have made a decision. Big thanks to Epiphanes. I'm really looking forward to seeing it uh, on the whole interior and it will, will really start to transform quickly. All three samples, uh, they were glossy paint. Uh, there is also a satin uh, a finish as an option and we're gonna choose satin for the bulkheads. Why well, it's the same color, but it takes the gloss out of it. Now matte is the end of the spectrum where there's no gloss and satin is an in-between. But we've never used uh, uh, the satin that Epiphanes makes, so that will be something new for us and uh, I'm excited to see it. Thank you all for being here. Thanks for watching, liking, subscribing, commenting, all of that. Big, big thanks to our patrons. If you would like to become a patron, uh, we do a walkthrough, a live uh, real-time walkthrough um, every Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, so yeah, if you're curious um, where we are sailing at the moment, actually. <laughs> no, maybe not. Um, we are not that far off a real-time. But yeah, um, that's what we do as a bonus uh, for patrons. Uh, then uh, you can head up there and become a patron for as little as two dollars, for as little as two dollars a month. Um, but it is highly customizable, and uh, you can choose whatever suits you best. Extra big thanks to the names now appearing on screen, and we will see you all next Friday.